All right, as we get started on our electrostatics unit, I want to go back real quick and review a couple of things. So, um, two things that we really need to remember are charge and Coulomb's law. Now, charge is the positiveness of protons and the negativeness of electrons. And along with what we learned in chemistry, charge is conserved. So, we can never get more or less uh, a charge than we have. We also need to remember um, protons are attracted to electrons, positive is attracted to negative, um, and like charges repel. The other thing the other thing we need to remember is that charge is measured in coulombs. We use a C for that. It's a huge amount of charge. One electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. It means I have to have a lot of electrons to get one coulomb of charge. Also, one proton is equal to that much. So, um, charge is measured in coulombs. Protons are positive. Electrons are negative. Charge is conserved throughout all of this. I can neutralize charge by putting protons and electrons together, but charge is always conserved. Um, and just to note, to talk about charge, we use Q, either a lowercase Q or a capital Q. That's how we denote charge in equations. Coulomb's law, as you'll remember, tells me about the force between two charges. Q1 times Q2 over the distance separating them squared. Um, that's the electric force between two charges. And we need to remember that K is equal to 9 times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. This is the coulomb constant. But this tells me about the force between two charges. Um, if the force is positive, The two things repel. If force is negative, they attract. If I put two positive charges in here, um, we know they're going to repel, and that's going to give me positive. Same thing. If I put two negative charges in here, we know they're going to repel. Um, we also need to remember what the over r squared means. It means if I double the distance, We, we go to one-fourth the amount of force that we had before. If I triple the distance, we go to one-ninth the amount of force that we had before. Um, that's a very important thing to remember as well. But all of this is stuff that we've already covered. We've already talked about Coulomb's Law. We've already talked about charge. We've talked about charging objects. We've talked about induction and polarization and all that stuff. As we need to know it, I'll bring it back up. But these are sort of the basics that we need to have right now. As we get into electrostatics, we're going to talk about things in a little bit different of a way. Um, the first thing we're going to do is talk about the electric field. We use E with a funny little arrow. That just means that it is a vector. Now, the electric field is defined as the, the force per unit charge at a point in space. Now this in space thing is important. So let's pretend that we have a positive charge right here. And we're going to look at a spot that is r away from my positive charge. We're going to look at 
empty space. There is absolutely nothing in that empty space. But because of this charge, any charge that I put in here is going to experience something. Okay, This positive charge um, changes the space around it. These charges have an effect on the space around it. We call that change, we call that effect that goes out to everything around it, um, the electric field. It's a characteristic of empty space. There's nothing there. It just tells me, in general, how everything acts. So the way that we're going to calculate this thing is we're going to take our, our force and divide it by whatever charge we would put there. So we've got this KQ1Q over R squared, and we're going to divide that by Q. And so what we get is that the electric field is equal to K times Q over R squared. Where, where this Q is this charge, R tells me how far away the specific point in space I'm talking about is, uh, and, and K is what K has always been. So by looking at the electric field, we know how any charge is going to behave if I put it here. The units for the electric field are Newtons per Coulomb. Force per unit charge. If I put four Coulombs at a point in space, I'm going to know the magnitude of the force acting on that four Coulombs. But I could put anything there. The nice thing about the electric field, only a single charge determines the electric field. Okay, The electric field is just going to be characteristic of the space around a charge. It doesn't have to do with two charges. It tells me about empty space. So what we just wrote down, E equals KQ over R squared, tells me about the empty space from this charge, Q. Okay. It tells me how everything around this is going to act. Um, now, there are some things to note about the electric field. Because this is a positive charge, the electric field points away from it. So it points away from positive charge. And so that means it's going to be towards negative charge. Points away from positive charge and towards negative charge. The electric field is written from the perspective of a teeny tiny, insignificant, positive test charge. We had to pick something to write it in terms of. So because of Benjamin Franklin and, and all of them, we, we decided to do it for a positive charge. So the electric field points in the direction that points away from positive charge and towards negative charge. It points in the direction of a positive charge. If I put a tiny little positive charge here, it would point away. The magnitude of the electric field is determined by this. The direction of the electric field is determined by what would a positive charge do there. So let's look at an example of the electric field. We're actually going to look at two. So for the first one, find the electric field a distance of 0.5 meters away from a let's say do a number I can I can use um, 0 0.5 coulomb charge and let's call it a positive 0.5 coulomb charge so if we draw it we have our positive charge here, 
we're going to go 0.5 meters away and I want the electric field at that point and that's plus 0.5 coulombs. So this is probably the simplest case but we said one that the electric field points away from positive charge so if I'm at this point the electric field points away from that positive charge so that's the direction of my electric field as far as finding the magnitude of the electric field or the size of the electric field we know that it's going to be K times our charge divided by the distance that we are away from it squared so it's going to be 9 times 10 to the ninth um, Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times 0.5 coulombs divided by 0.5 meters and that quantity is going to be squared so looking at the units meters squared takes care of meters squared and coulombs takes care of one of those when you do all the math the magnitude of the electric field comes out to be um, 18 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons per coulomb. Oh, sorry, times 10 to the positive 9th newtons per coulomb. That's a huge number. But what this means is if I were to put at this point a 1 coulomb charge, it would experience a force of 18 times 10 to the 9th newtons. If I were to put a 2 coulomb charge there, it would experience a 36 times 10 to the 9th Newton force. What the electric field has done is told me about this space, how it reacts to this charge. Now, just finding the electric field from a single charge is, is very simple. So, so we're going to up that, essentially. Um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more in class. This is where we're going to spend a good bit of time with the electric field. Um, but let's say I have a positive charge. And we'll do everything associated with this charge in black. And this charge is, let's say, um, 2 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. And, and we're going to say over here, we've got a negative charge and let's for this one do everything in red and let's say that's going to be negative uh, and to be mean 1 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs and we're going to look and we're going to say that they are 2 meters apart and we're going to look at the electric field in the dead center between the two of them what is the electric field, the total electric field, uh, and just to keep the whole color situation straight, say our total electric field, our total electric field in blue. What is the total electric field at this point from those two charges? So, charge one, two times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs, or two nanocoulombs. Um, two nanocoulombs. That's how we're going to start writing it from now on. It's just much easier. Nano means times 10 to the negative 9. So this is a positive charge. Looking here, the electric field from the first one, because it's a positive charge, points away from that. That gives me E1. Okay, That's one contribution to the total electric field. So let's go ahead and find out what E1 is. E1 is going to be k times q over r squared. Well, that's 2 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs times uh, 9 times 10 to the ninth newton meters squared per coulomb squared. And we're going to divide that by 1 meter squared. Uh, so looking at what happens. Coulombs goes away, one of my coulombs goes away, my meters squared go away, meters squared go away, 10 to the ninth and 10 to the negative ninth go away, and electric field from the first charge is 18 newtons per coulomb. 
Okay, and it's pointing to the right. From the second charge, I, I see that at this point, because it's negative, the electric field at that point is going to point towards it. So E2 also points to the right, but it's pointing towards this charge because the electric field points at negative charge because that's what a positive charge would do. Uh, so looking at the electric field 2, again, that's kq over r squared, 9 times 10 to the ninth times 1 times 10 to the negative ninth divided by 1 squared. E2 comes out to be 9 newtons per coulomb, and that's pointing to the right as well. Hopefully you're asking yourselves, well, why didn't we put this negative sign, it was with this charge, in here? Well, the reason we didn't is because for the electric field, positive and negative for charges only tells me about direction. And since I drew this arrow, I took care of the direction, and I don't have to do that anymore. So that's going to be something you need to remember. I don't have to put in positive or negative for these charges when I'm trying to find the electric field because positive and negative determine for me direction. Now that I have E1 and E2, we come to a very, very important principle. It's called superposition. If I want the total electric field, and this shouldn't come as a surprise, it's going to be E1 as a vector plus E2 as a vector. Well, I see that E1 and E2 are both pointing in the same direction. So my total electric field is just going to be 18 plus 9. They're both pointing in the same direction. They add together. My total electric field at that point from both charges comes out to be 27 newtons per coulomb. And because direction is important, that's 27 newtons per coulomb, in the positive x direction, or to the right. Okay. 